Hi there. During this session, I'm going to try and put uh, the Western world's reliance upon fossil fuels into a context. A context which was set up by the Industrial Revolution. So what I'm trying to get you to understand is why we became so reliant on these fuels. Um, this has got a, I guess, a, a social science aspect. But remember, the underlying feature is there's features, or the underlying feature, the underlying theme is that there's um, characteristics of fuels which cause them to become some important on society. So let's think about the Industrial Revolution as a time of change, and straight away let's consider it looking at fuel usage. Now, as we can see, pre-Industrial Revolution, the world, uh, or the Western world, with particularly thinking the United Kingdom and actually the US as well, um, the majority of energy was released from burning wood. We had a very, very rural economy, and agriculture was king. Suddenly, as the Industrial Revolution takes place, and this is going from, I guess, the Agricultural Revolution through to the real Industrial Revolution, uh, from about 1850 to 1900, we see the use of coal dramatically expand. Having access to this fuel, which could release large quantities of energy and was available in some unique positions and locations around the world, so it was accessible to, uh, I guess, industrialists at the time, as we'll see in a minute, um, meant that suddenly it became the resource of choice. Why this came about? So let's think about this in a little bit more detail. Uh, the changes that took place. So, uh, with the introduction of the burning of coal and the Industrial Revolution, there was a huge cultural shift. The cultural shift, we're looking at Britain now, the population uh, went from, in 100 years, went from 6 million to 21 million people. There was a huge cultural shift, and that wasn't necessarily driven by coal, but what it was is introduced uh, a set of, I guess, um, steps forward in being able to preserve life and maintain life. And I guess the Industrial Revolution was overall a, a safer environment in some ways. Uh, the population in London, uh, if the population in Britain increased some three and a half fold, the population in London, the big city, uh, increased by a factor of six. So suddenly we have 65% of the population who are working in agriculture, and that drops down to 25%. What we're seeing here is a big population expansion. Populations going into the city, and the reason for that is because the requirements of agriculture become less and less and less. Now, why this took place was generally down to innovation. The innovation of the time, first of all, we have James Watt. Uh, Watt also being the unit for... Uh, power, so the amount of joules per second, and he made dramatic improvements to the steam engine, so it became a more useful tool for transferring uh, chemical energy into useful mechanical energy, kinetic energy. This in turn led to the industrialization into a number of fields. Initially agriculture, that became much more efficient, but weaving and mining and steelworking soon really, really benefited from the amount of energy which could be released in steam engines or engines of different sorts. Now, what this did in turn was cause a, a huge cultural shift away from agricultural countryside and we cause a migration towards the big cities. And these big cities Um, really, really grew because there's a place to bring lots of people together to be able to work in big factories and uh, these cities, particularly if you look at the north of England, Bradford, Leeds, Sheffield, uh, Newcastle, um, Edinburgh and Glasgow, these cities really, really grew because they're close proximity to coal fields. So this close proximity to coal fields means that they had energy available to them. Now, um, being having less requirement to work on agriculture, because now we could have big machines doing a lot of the work, um, meant that a lot of people were driven away from the rural communities into the cities, 
and um, these industrialized cities had work for them. There was work available for them to work in these big factories, and that caused a shift. And suddenly we now have a new working class, an industrialized working class, the true proletariat. So, uh, why are these places in the right place? Well, uh, British, British colonies provided uh, cotton in the first place. But the cotton industry at the time uh, was very much, uh, there was a, a trade for the cotton industry already set up. There was an infrastructure. There was um, already ships coming from one place to another. What happened was when the weaving machines were suddenly produced, that allowed mass production. So although there was an additional an initial structure, it meant that suddenly we have weaving machines which are able to uh, produce a much bigger output of woven cotton. And thankfully, uh, raw cotton was available from the British colonies in the first place. So that allowed this market to expand and expand and expand. Transportation also increased during this time. If we look at the miles of railroad, and as well as railroad in the United Kingdom, there's also an increase in canals. Um, this improved transportation for railroad was improved because of the engines which were available. But this also meant that raw materials and goods and fuels could easily be moved around as well. So this is a complement to the change which is taking place. Finally, we've got energy accessibility. The output of coal went up and up and up during this period and continued to increase. And that's the important point here. There wasn't a, a limit on the amount of coal which was available. So therefore, there was an accessibility to energy which could keep on building. And that meant industrialization kept on happening and wasn't restricted by this coal supply. All of these factors uh, caused a reliance on the relatively cheap available fuel of coal to be able to provide energy or release energy for the newly industrialized world which was um, using this energy to create improved steel products and also to improve in uh, woven and fabric products as well. So all in all these are the driving forces which pushed the industrial revolution.